So we saw that in the period immediately after the First World War, which was described to be the interwar period, there was a rise of totalitarian ideologies or such ideologies which are centered around one powerful person. Now any discussion about the rise of totalitarian ideologies in interwar Europe is incomplete without a discussion on the rise of fascism in Italy and the role that Mussolini played in its particular rise. Now Mussolini was the fascist leader we all remember. Now we will see Mussolini's rise and in what manner his ideology fascism became his tool of obtaining authority. But before we looked into Mussolini's rise as leader and fascist Italy itself, we have to understand what fascism actually is. Now fascism is an ideology. An ideology is a set of beliefs or thoughts for a couple of people and then these beliefs and thoughts becomes the basis for policy making or any kind of executive action is based off these ideologies. Now, any discussion on ideology can only start by understanding the origin of such ideology. So now let's look at the origin of fascism or in simple terms, let's answer the question, what is fascism? So in simple words, what we have to understand therefore is what fascism actually is. And while addressing the question what fascism is, we will be looking at its nature, its origins and also in what ways fascism rose up in Italy. So starting from the origins of fascism, fascism is derived from this particular symbol. Now look at this particular image. What do you see? It looks like some form of axe, doesn't it? Now why am I showing a wood cutting object while discussing a political ideology? This is because we have to pay more attention to what the axe is tied on to. So in this particular symbol you see that a bundle of rods are held together by some sort of binding agent or a rope of sorts. And these bundle of sticks or rods are holding up this particular blade. This is because this particular instrument is called a fasces and this is a symbol of authority from the ancient Roman times and this particular word fasces gave birth to the Italian word fascio. Now why was it a symbol of power? Who used to wield this particular weapon or this particular instrument. Was this a weapon bestowed upon someone by the gods up above in reality? Just like it is a symbol of power, the power it's symbolizing also happens to be a symbol itself. So in reality, it's what idea it projects which really matters. And the idea it's projecting is the concept of unity. Now while speaking of unity, do you all remember the old children folk tale we all read where an old man was trying to teach his young sons who were constantly quarreling among themselves what the importance of unity is. So let us quickly take a look at the story once again. There once was an old man who had four sons who used to constantly quarrel amongst each other. The old man had enough one day and then he asked one of his sons to go and fetch him a bundle of sticks. The son did so and then the old man proceeded to hand each of his sons a single stick with an instruction that they need to break the stick into half. The sons could easily do so because the sticks were weak and feeble. But then the old man had another trick up his sleeve. He then asked his sons to break the entire bundle of sticks into half and no matter how hard they tried, they could not do this because the bundle of sticks was a strong collective unit and that is when the father gave his sons a very important lesson. What was this lesson? Let's see that now. The lesson which the father gave is that unity is strength. Only when one is united do they have the strength. So thus we now understand that this particular symbol of power, fasces, was actually denoting the concept of unity. So you see over here, Roman magistrates used to carry the symbol of power called the fasces. Now exactly how is it denoting unity? Well, these bundle of rods held together, they were 
showcasing the various provinces that the Roman Empire had. And if you look at this particular map, Rome or the Roman Empire had multiple provinces which spread across the Mediterranean region. So this particular symbol showcased that these particular provinces were breakable on their own. But when they're held together by the Roman Empire itself, they're unbeatable and no one can touch them. So it's again showcasing that unity is strength. And in this particular symbol, you can see a blade. This again showcases the empire. One stick cannot hold up the empire. All of the sticks have to come together, stay together, be bound together, and then they can hold together the power of the empire. And the empire itself is a strength. The empire has life, as according to the Roman political ideology. And it's to the empire that all the provinces have to be subservient to and have to be held together. And only then can the empire protect them and all of them would be one symbol of authority. So we can understand that this particular symbol of authority dates back to the ancient Roman times. Now Rome was the capital of the Roman Empire. And after the decline of the Roman Empire, many states popped up in the region which were centered around Rome. Much, much later, when the nation of Italy was established, guess what was the capital? Rome again. Thus we can understand that the symbol which gives fascism its meaning. Thus we can understand that the very symbol which gives fascism its meaning is linked to Italy's ancient past. So therefore we saw that fascism was derived from the symbol of authority which was the fascist, which happened to be a Latin word which meant being bound together or being united. Now later on this led to the Italian word fascio and therefore fascism. Now the ideology of fascism was also influenced by the political thinkers of 18th century, namely Hegel, Nietzsche and of course Sorel. Now these political thinkers had given forward the idea of a suprastate. A suprastate is again a state which has a life of its own, has its own authority and therefore the people have to be subjected to the sovereignty of the state. Now every person therefore needs to be subservient and needs to understand the state has its own demands. Now the fascists took many of their ideologies from the works of these political thinkers but they also happened to have interpreted it according to their own demands and therefore they only took those portions which best fit their ideals. So you can say that in many ways the fascists made their own truth. Now can you answer this question, who among the following influenced fascism as an ideology? Was it Hegel, was it Kant, was it Hitler or was it Weber? The correct answer is the political thinker Hegel. Since the entire concept of fascism is relating back to Italy's ancient past, it's pretty obvious that fascism as an ideology arose in Italy. But soon it spread to many other nearby countries around Italy which were influenced by the ideals of fascism. Now needless to say, these other countries happen to also alter the ideology. The same way if we ever give your friend an old phone, he would definitely alter the settings according to his own desires and whatever he wants and therefore similarly the other countries who took the ideology of fascism from Italy also made their own alterations and therefore there were many such different versions of fascism. The most notable being Nazism which arose in Germany under Adolf Hitler, something which we will see in the later part of the chapter. Now fascism is best defined to be an extreme right-wing, totalitarian, ultra-nationalist and corporatist ideology. Now hold up, that's a lot of words at the same time. All this does not make much sense to you right now. So why don't we try to demystify and break down these words into easier concepts to better understand the ideology itself. So this let's understand why was fascism an extreme right-wing totalitarian ultra-nationalist and corporatist ideology. So starting off what exactly is an ideology? As I already mentioned an ideology is a set of beliefs or ideals or ideas of one or a group of people and when these ideas pop up they also make the basis for the policy of these people. So these people 
would then base their actions upon their ideas and that makes up an ideology. Now, what is extreme or extremist? Well, as the name suggests, extreme suggests those ideologies that are aggressive. Anything that is a little aggressive, harsh and always extreme makes up an extremist ideology. In simple terms, an extremist ideology does not mind resorting to violence or harsh means to achieve what they want. So, an extremist ideology is therefore aggressive. Now, what is right wing? Well, in politics, we have the left wing and the right wing. The right wing denotes to whatever that is conservative. So conservative elements in politics are called right wing politics. Now, right wing politicians, right wing ideologies tend to give more priority to concepts such as nationalism, tradition, culture, power, authority, and seems to pay less attention to concepts such as rights, equality, internationalism and other such concepts which are considered liberal or left-wing. As mentioned, fascism happens to be a totalitarian ideology. Now, total means absolute or complete and therefore in a totalitarian state or ideology all the power especially political power is centralized or is focused in the hands of one person the person who happens to be the leader of this particular totalitarian regime and this person happens to be above all the other people in the particular state and everyone else is his subject and are therefore subservient to him and can never oppose whatever the leader says now fascism also wore the coat of ultranationalism. Ultranationalism is this aggressive love for one's own country which makes one prioritize the interest of their own country over the others. And by doing this, they can even justify war just to showcase that their country is superior to the other power. Now, ultranationalism also happens to be called aggressive nationalism. And to know more about aggressive nationalism, you can click on the link below to access the iDictionary feature. Now, finally, fascism also happens to be corporatist or have the ideals of corporatism embedded in them. Now, corporatism endeavors to create a state in which the society is organized on the basis of the groups of people having similar interests. Now by interest, we do not mean hobby groups like chess or cricket. We mean people having similar corporate or economic interests. So lawyers can make one of their own groups while the businessman would be in one group and society would be based on this classification not on any other basis of caste or any other basis of classification. Society is stratified and classified in a corporate state based on these interest groups. A corporate state also has a tendency to control all businesses in that particular state but unlike communism, it does allow the private ownership of businesses and property. So, in a nutshell, therefore, we understand that fascism was an aggressive set of ideals or beliefs which was focused on conservative thought. Now, conservatism happens to put emphasis on concepts like order, tradition, culture and nationalism. And nationalism or ultranationalism propagated by fascism tends to put the interests of their own nation above others. Now fascism also aims to create a corporate state in which society is organized based on the interest groups of people. And fascism or a fascist state is based on a single leader and all the power and authority is vested in the hands of that particular leader who happens to be absolute and supreme and no one can oppose that person. So therefore, fascism happens to be an extreme, right-wing, totalitarian, ultra-nationalist and corporatist ideology. And fascism is opposed to liberal democracy, socialism and liberalism itself, which are all considered to be left-wing political ideas. Now, those were all theories and definitions. But what will happen if you suddenly get a chance of meeting a fascist? 
what are the various things he might say and in what ways the things he would say would reflect the ideology of fascism itself well for starters he might say that those who oppose us shall die as extreme as it might sound this is a reflection of extremism something that is ultra radical or aggressive which fascism happens to be then you might strike up a conversation about how corrupt that particular person's leader is to which the fascist might reply that i pledge my allegiance to our supreme leader and we will or i will never do anything which he asks us not to do long live the leader so you can see that this person is subservient to the authority of the leader and this person would never oppose the leader or he would have to face harsh consequences and therefore we can see that this person is at the behest of a totalitarian leader as fascism happens to be a totalitarian ideology then you might get into a debate with him regarding whose country happens to be better and suddenly he gets enraged and says that my country is the best and there is no way that your country can possibly defeat us if you dare to try and compete with us we shall declare war on you so you can see that his ultra nationalist or aggressive nationalist sentiments are burning up when he's saying this with anger and he says that he would not mind resorting or his country would not mind resorting to declaring war on the other nation just to show that they're superior now that happens to be an ultra nationalist tendency where nothing not even war is unjustified as long as it's about showing that their country is superior now fascism happens to be an ultra nationalist ideology and therefore what he's saying with anger makes sense for a fascist to say now finally you may ask sir why does your country not let everyone vote to which he will say at preserving our national culture and tradition is much more important than making sure all the people in our country get to execute their right to vote or not so he feels that the preservation of conservative ideals namely culture or tradition is much more important than the preservation of fundamental human rights namely the one to be able to vote so we can see that this person happens to subscribe to right wing or conservative thoughts of politics which also happens to be the ideological base for fascism so thus we saw the definition of fascism we saw the various ways in which we can define fascism and then we also got a chance to meet a fascist and see what he would say in situations when he's provoked or asked questions about his state now that sums up a definition of fascism in essence fascism has some certain core beliefs starting with nothing being more important than the nation the nation has a life of its own a nation has its own authority own life and its own ego and therefore the nation is believed to be its own entity now this nation is believed to have the supreme authority and the private interest or the interest of people or the interest of groups can never be more important than the supreme interest of the nation and therefore the nation's interests are supreme and would always be superior to the private or collective interest of groups and finally we see that fascism being a totalitarian ideology puts a core emphasis on the need for a powerful dictator now a powerful dictator would be able to control all the aspects of the citizens including their private lives and all this would be done by the leader himself and he would be able to take all decisions in the interest of the nation and he would determine what the interest of the nation would be and in this case while trying to preserve the interest of the nation the leader can surpass the interests of the citizens at any time and therefore would be able to control the citizens lives as well now this incessant need for a powerful dictator which fascism possesses happened to fuel the rise of mussolini who was the fascist leader who led italy when the fascist state was established 
Now Mussolini happened to implement fascism in Italy and created a fascist state. Now fascism at first was very beneficial for the Italians, especially as I mentioned in the initial years. As Mussolini was able to generate employment for people and Mussolini was able to fund and also create public work projects, namely a better transportation system, a better generation of electricity, better infrastructure for education and development of the selves and of course he was able to project the idea of a stronger Italy, one with a better and stronger currency, with a much more powerful army and definitely with the might of being able to take on the entire Mediterranean region and therefore Italy was made into a nation which no one would want to mess with. But as the years progressed, the cracks in a fascist state started to show and thus the prosperity which initially came up was thus short-lived and this was especially after Mussolini became the absolute dictator or the totalitarian leader of Italy and he was obsessed with power and holding power over people and therefore he oppressed even the most basic rights of the citizens namely the right to speak their mind and even the right to know more about things and this led to the creation of a fascist state where no one could dare oppose the leader or else he would have to suffer harsh consequences by which definitely we understand we also mean death. So in this video we try to trace the rise of fascism in Italy by understanding the origins of fascism, exactly what fascism is, in what ways is it an ideology, what are the objectives of fascism and also we saw the various beliefs of fascism. In the next video, we would be looking at the rise of Mussolini himself who was able to create a fascist state and create a cult of personality around him. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one-to-one -one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step-by-step -step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like playstations and iPads. So add Delta Step. Learning is not just fun and easy, it is rewarding too. So register for free now.